Hi, this is Jenny P4 with a new episode of Jenny's Muse. And a muse is about what inspires you. And I've been an artist and been inspired for years by artists and um, other artists, famous artists. And um, I wanted to share some of my inspiration with you and talk a little bit about how that's affected me and my work. So I have my, my buddy here, Mr. Darcy. Oh, <laughs> who's not so interested? Well, he's going to go sit over there. But anyway, he's going to be listening and, um, you know, he's privy to all of this. So I thought he might like to be part of the show and we'll see if he has any comments to make at some point. So for me, it's been a long journey back to artwork and I wanted to share a little bit about that journey because um, I was an art major in college and uh, I had this experience that I'm going to share with you. Um, I went to Ohio State and I was a painting major and my senior year I got to have the head of the department for my teacher and his name um, was Mr. King and he was kind of the king you know and everybody was in, very much in awe of him and so uh, I painted so hard. I, I, I worked so hard and, you know, did really great work, I thought, that semester. And I was always in the studio. And Mr. King evidently was friends with uh, Roy Lichtenstein, um, a very famous pop artist who was an alumnus at Ohio State. He was a buddy. And he came to class one day. And, you know, we were just awestruck. And so I worked even harder. and. I was so motivated for that class and we get to the end of the semester and we had a big critique and um, oh I should kind of throw in that you know during the semester Mr. King didn't really talk to anyone except this one girl in class and she was uh, doing some kind of interesting work she would do these tape paintings that were sort of Frank Stella takeoffs with um, you know tape paintings they, they were good um, I mean, for me, they kind of were a little too heady and didn't quite get where my heart is, where I like to paint from, but um, I could see certainly the value in them. But we got to the end of the semester and had a critique and everyone came and sat in a big circle on the floor in this old building at Ohio State, um, Hayes Hall, and we're waiting for 20 minutes and he finally comes in and Everyone had their work lined up around the room and there was this big pause and Mr. King circled around and he pointed us, at us and he said, there's only one A in this class and do you know who it is? And we all go, uh-uh. <laughs> and he pointed to this one bolt of muslin on the wall that had blocked down and across the floor and he said, that's the A. And, he, and we're all like, oh my God, we thought this was a painting class. And he said, and do you know why? And we go, no. And he said, well, because she's asking questions and it was Miss Tate Paintings who did it. And she's asking questions and the rest of you are giving answers. Well, I was really devastated because I'd been painting what I thought was my best and I thought I'd been asking a lot of questions and every time I'd done a painting I would set up little challenges for myself and try to accomplish something and you know to me it was um, sort of the beginning of what I saw as you know the indoctrination into the art world of what is out there and cool and avant-garde and what is just regular stuff. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that and um, I've had a long journey since Mr. King and I was afraid to actually do anything figurative after that class um, and it was I think the start of my abstract art career and I got eventually into digital art and I did a lot of work in Photoshop and I printed out on aluminum and I did these great big paintings and I liked them visually and they satisfied something in me but there was something that I just kind of wanted to do and I wasn't quite getting at it. 
and, and I sort of fantasized about maybe getting into paint again, but I didn't know what I wanted to paint. I didn't have any ideas at all. So fast forward a year and a half ago um, when I lost my husband and I decided I was going to kind of find my way back. And the thing that came to me was that I needed to be painting. And I hadn't actually painted, really painted, since I was in college. And so I didn't even know what I was going to do. So it started out with me working on my photography and taking images that I shot with my cell phone and then just doing paintings from those. And a lot of those were people talking on cell phones and living in Boston. There was so much of that, you know, people would crash into each other in the streets and everyone's in their cell phone. And so I just wanted to show how we're sort of disconnected from each other. And that's where I started. And then last fall, I went to France and started uh, taking photographs in France. And I was really interested in, I was drawn to people sitting in the cafes. This was in the south of France. And of course, all over France, there's outdoor cafes. And I think that's such a, you know, interesting subject on so many levels to paint. And it, Mr. King would have totally disapproved. And um, at this point in my life, I didn't care. So um, I did start painting. And I'll show you some of those in just a minute. But this here is um, a Toulouse-Lautrec print. And it's funny because in high school, my mother got me a book of his artwork, um, his prints. And I used to just pour over this book and look at the different people and his wonderful techniques and it told me so much about life and it was done so well in the colors and just really great line quality and great compositions and but the thing that I loved the most was uh, the honesty of the portrayal of the people and I was so drawn to that so I was sort of surprised when I started doing my cafe paintings and all of a sudden I realized that, wow, this feels a little familiar and I decided to look at some Toulouse-Lautrec artwork and thought, holy smoke, I think I was kind of influenced by him. And when I was in France, one of the places I went was Albi, which is where he was born. And I went to the Toulouse-Lautrec Museum and saw some amazing, gorgeous, gorgeous artwork. And I'm sure that that had an incredible effect on me. And I mean, I've been going to museums my whole life and nothing has ever really hit me like that. And so I think that um, I can see a little bit of inspiration, you know, developing as, as I work. And he's a great teacher in terms of his composition and his uh, use of color. And if you look at this one, there's a, a diagonal line on her back and it just, you know, it leads the uh, eye up to her face and it is great eye path movement. Um, and years ago, I worked in an advertising department uh, at a department store and the art director there told me that a good composition always has a triangle in it somewhere. And I always remember that. And if you look at this one, this is a great example. You can see a triangle just from, you know, this point and this point, you know, going up to the top of her head. And um, that's a good example of composition. So I think we're going to look at some other artwork. So here I have a painting taken from a photo that I took with my phone, just walking by some guys sitting in a cafe in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France. And it was a Saturday morning, so I call this one Saturday morning. And this is the one that sort of struck me that there was a little 
Latrec thing going on in there. But what I really enjoyed doing was the body language and you know working on the composition and the colors and capturing the colors in France. And, and Mr. Darcy likes it. Mr. Darcy likes it. So he he's watched me create this painting, so so he's <laughs> he's a big fan. So we're gonna look at some other paintings now too. Okay. So here Mr. Darcy and I are at a cafe in Aix-en-Provence at night and he's getting a treat. But actually this is um, a painting that I did another one from a shot on my phone and I'll walk around a little bit so that you can see it. And again I wanted to capture the light and the body language and the sense of people congregating in an outdoor cafe because that is so much a part of France and to me that's really the essence of what you see when you're walking around there and I wanted to capture it and I'm thinking that um, what's next for me is looking around in the spring if it ever gets here uh, doing the same thing here in the States so um, let's look at the next one so here we are at another cafe at night and this one the people are a little bit more removed and if, if you look at them back in way, 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 way back in there. Um, they're not quite as important as the buildings and the colors, but I did want to create that sense of place and that kind of intimate courtyard that you see so much of at night. And I love the trees, those great big trees that they have all over with a light colored bark. And uh, there's something so magical about it. So that's what I wanted to capture here. So I worked really hard on this and um, I'm going to show you a little step action of the evolution of a painting now. As an art teacher, one of the things that fascinated me years ago when I was an art teacher was color psychology. And I used to read a lot of books about it and learned all the different qualities of colors. And I like to create moods with certain colors and feelings. And um, you'll notice the background of this particular painting is purple and um, green and um, so it, it's their secondary colors mostly well except for the blue but it's a little little edgier to create some tension so the purple um, the quality that's associated with that in a lot of books is kind of a, a magical color you know like she's wishing that you know things were different and it's a moodier color it's darker and you know there's a little bit of feeling of um, discontent there so you know you think about maybe a classic uh, Monet painting with pastel colors you know which is beautiful but totally different feeling and you know the colors speak to you in ways that you're probably not even aware of unless you know you're thinking about this. So um, that's actually something that I wanted to talk about and that is um, you know doing a pretty painting versus a painting that is n more um, interpretive and to me I've always well one of the things that was drummed in my head ever since I was little is you shouldn't try to do a pretty painting. You know, that's, that's not what art is. And you, what you want to do is make it real. And you want to show 
something that's honest and something that's true instead of just doing something that's pretty for the sake of cuteness or um, prettiness. So, I mean, you know, this is sort of how I grew up, but, um, and I would see people out, you know, in their, you know, hats and their easels and, you know, painting landscapes outside and I would think, oh boy, you know, that's just not where I'm at, you know, that's great for them, but, I, you know, I just don't have interest in doing that. And I always sort of felt like, well, maybe, you know, a little bit like Mr. King, oh, just a little bit, that, you know, maybe that's not as much art. And that this is a whole art school job that, you know, was done on me. <laughs> maybe that's not as much art as something that, you know, is more interpretive and more a little more unconventional and where you dig a little deeper. But I have to tell you, um, last summer I took a trip that was sponsored here in Salem up to Baker's Island and it was a plein air painting trip. And so I went out there mostly because I wanted to go to Baker's Island and I thought it would be really fun to try it. So I got all my paints together, which I hadn't used in 20 years or something and they actually were still good um, in the tubes you know most of them were good and you know I might check out my brushes and I got a canvas and went out there and um, I was using acrylic paints which are terrible to use outside and I had the worst painting of my life happen and it was really humbling and humiliating and um, it gave me a great appreciation for people who do plein air and it's very, very challenging. And you know, our ideas from art school about what art is and you know, what people are trying to accomplish are it's sometimes pretty narrow. And so um, I did want to talk about this book that I picked up at the library and it's called Old in Art School and it's by Mel Painter and it's the memoir of starting over. So, um, I mean, for me, I'm kind of doing this in reverse. I mean, I went to art school and I got all the snottiness and, you know, and then I got it, like, pulled out of me by life. And, you know, now I'm just trying to do what, you know, is in my heart and paint it. This woman, at 64 years old, decided that she was going to go to art school. And she... Um, was willing to put up with all the humiliation and the uh, the expense and everything so that she could be an artist. And, you know, um, I feel like I've just overcome art school recently. And, um, you know, I just wonder what she was thinking, but, you know, she seems, I'm halfway through the book and, you know, she's putting up with a lot of stuff right now from people and um, she's finding it um, difficult and you know people are saying things to her like you'll never be an artist well I mean who's to say and who's to say what an artist is and you know that's one thing I wanted to talk about here is because everybody has their own muse and this is Jenny's muse and I'm talking about what inspires me and um, everyone has things that inspire them too so um, the, it's kind of an interesting read, though, Old in Art School, um, Mel Painter. And, um, you know, changing your life and shaking it up is never a bad thing. So, so what have I learned on this painting adventure? Um, I've learned a lot about color mixing because when you're using real paint, it's different than doing it in Photoshop, for sure. And um, Photoshop has infinite undoes which is lovely and I was very used to working digitally and if I goofed up nah, not a problem you know you just undo it and um, it's gone but when you're painting for real you know you running into all kinds of things like um, you know, the paint quality and, you know, painting light over, dark over light or light over dark and, you know, um, mixing colors, how do they look next to each other, it's different and um, they dry quickly and when you're using acrylics, which 
I learned that um, there's different kinds of acrylics and so I started using slow drying acrylics which are a lot like oil paint which makes me very happy and um, I don't really like oil paint because uh, of the smells and um, it also does take a very long time to dry so this is the the best of all worlds for me because the colors are great and I can um, blend colors pretty easily so that's um, really something that I have picked up lately and in terms of where I'm going um, I'm starting to work bigger and bigger every painting seems to grow a little bit and um, I'm loving the size but it takes longer and longer than of course to do a painting and I'm finding that it is like a um, you know vortex sucking me in and you know she's gone goodbye so I'm in this new world and what I'm loving is creating this world with paint you know putting dark next to light and creating a shape and making it come to life that is so exciting and I'm just having the best time with it so this is my muse right now and um, where it will take me I don't know but I intend to keep doing it so um, I do have a lot of work on my website which is at jennysmuse.com um, or actually it's at jennypivort.com um, which go to the same place and you can look at uh, the art there so I hope you'll check that out and there's a bunch of blog posts on some of these topics so feel free to read them and um, write and say hello so thank you for watching and I hope maybe you've enjoyed it and gotten a little inspiration too if you feel like painting and join us next time for Jenny's Muse. Thanks!